Hi everybody, my name is Caden. I'm Jaden. I'm Yon. I'm Jason. We are uh, on the Tor YouTube channel. And we thank you guys very, very much for hanging out with us. We appreciate you all, and we can't thank you enough for hanging with us, being part of this reading. We are nailing towards the end of the writings of Abraham. How's everybody doing? Good. Good. We heard that uh, our little buddy Eli took a couple of stings yesterday. And lo and behold, Cade was walking out barefooted around the house and uh, like a bee took him on his foot in our house. This is the life in the jungle. It is a very wild life. We live with ants. We have pet ant collection everywhere. Miss um, Nicole has ant collections. Um, she loves her ants. No. no, she says no from a distance. But uh, <laughs> that's what it is down here in the jungle. It is wild and wooly and very, very uh, interesting for sure. All right, gentlemen, um, how's everybody out there? Everyone alive? Yeah, okay. Everybody kicking? Yeah. Anyone have any good stories or anything to talk about? No. Nothing. Too. That's Thanks. very uninteresting. All right, well, as uninteresting as we are, let us begin in our reading today. Part, can you give us a, not a synopsis, can you give us a recap of what exactly happened yesterday? Anybody. All right. So yesterday, uh, they were going up to the thing, and uh, Abraham's time getting ready for the sacrifice, and Isaac and him are binding him, tells him how to bind him, and uh, he's getting all tied up on there. They're both weeping and crying. They're both, uh, both do bad news for John, and Isaac's okay with being sacrificed. And uh, that was the point where we're about to get to where Abraham's about to sacrifice him. Yeah, and we find out stuff that we've never found in other scriptures. What are some stuff we found out in the writings of Abraham that we, we have not we did not know from any other scriptures other than the writings of Abraham. Anyone? Um, the Satan turned into a landslide. Yeah, Satan turned into a landslide. That's one thing. Eli, you got anything? Or are you going to like pass uh, out on me? I don't think Are you so. awake? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. Okay, all right. Get rid of his pillow, will you? Okay. Um, okay, do you have anything? Anything that came from the writings of Abraham that we have not seen anywhere else? I don't think so. Um, Abraham. Yeah, stuff, lots of stuff. I mean, stuff. yeah, we, are we just talking about this part right here? Just, the whole book? Just, just, every, just little parts here and there. I mean, um, well, we know that Abraham was kind of like a priest. We know that Shem was Melchizedek. Mm -hmm. We know that he went to a city of Shalom that he, where he grew up at. And uh, yeah, he was raised by Noah and Shem. We know that he has power to call on fire. Yeah, yeah. We've absolutely learned a tremendous amount of stuff. Now, for anybody who wants a, um, a free download of this, it is completely available. Uh, links are in the description. Yah Scriptures, it is uh, the Apocrypha. Inside of the Apocrypha, the second download right there, is where we're reading the writings of Abraham right now. And if you'd like the other scriptures, the 66 book scriptures, it's the very first PDF download. Now, for anybody who wants to pre-order this, it is available. We will not change this price again. Um, guaranteed on it. This is the final price that we have on this. But you can get a hard copy of this. This is a large print, 14.5 font, which is probably one of the largest large print scriptures I've ever seen. I, I don't think there's one such out there that is in such a large font. Now, this has 103 books. It is all of this. It has three bookmarks in it, a very nice front cover. This is going to be helping the prisoners out. We are going to be doing a prison ministry with this. For every scriptures that is sold, we are going to be getting a scriptures into our brothers in chains. And we already have some brothers in chains that are requesting this scriptures right here. And so the list has already begun. So if you would like to help the prisoners, if you would like to be uh, get one of these, this is a limited edition. There's only a thousand of these and there's less than that now, far less um, with based on the orders. So it will be first come, first serve. And hopefully it will, we'll have a lot of these hopefully at some point. But for right now, we know that we'll be getting a thousand of these in stock. They will be in our hands shipping out at the end of February, somewhere in early March. And, um, yeah, that is how to donate to Boss Clan is by helping the prisoners. That's the only donation stuff that we have anywhere is for this. Okay, Ch starting chapter 146. You guys all ready to roll? Yep. Okay. When all was prepared, I picked up the knife, kissed my son Yitchak, and prepared to offer him as a sacrifice unto Yahuwah my Elohim. But the voice of Yahuwah came unto me, saying, Abraham, slay not thy son, for I have tested you in this manner that I might know that your hearts are perfect before me. Now I know that ye fear Yahuwah your Elohim, and that thou hast not withheld thine heir from my altar, and he hath willingly lain thereon to be a sacrifice of a burnt offering unto Yahuwah. Therefore lift up thine eyes, and behold, the ram that was chosen from the beginning to stand in the place of thy son Yitchak as a burnt offering before me. And I looked up, 
and saw a ram caught by horns in a thicket. For as that ram had advanced to the sacrifice, Satan had caught him in the thicket that he might not be offered in Yitchek's stead. But I went and freed him from the thicket and releasing my son Yitchek, I placed the ram upon the altar and offered him in Yitchek's place. That his blood might be considered as the blood of Yitchek before Yahuwah. And Yahuwah accepted the sacrifice of the ram as if it had been Yitchek. And Yahuwah appeared unto us in Barakas and my seed on that day. And we rejoiced in Yahuwah. When all things were finished, Yitchak and I returned to our camp rejoicing in Yahuwah, our Elohim. But when we reached the place, we found that Sarah was not there. For the angels of Satan had come to her, saying, Behold, dost thou not understand that Abraham goeth to offer thy son Yitchak as a burnt offering unto Yahuwah, his Elohim? Surely he doeth this because he is jealous of thy love for thy son, Yitchak. Go, therefore, and stop this thing, lest he to whom thine heart is knitted be destroyed from off the face of the earth. But Sarah said, Jubs, what do you got? Um, uh, it does uh, go hand in hand with Jasher. That's what Satan does. He goes in there and tells Sarah that he's going to uh, kill her son, and then uh, she she's very freaked out now. She's yeah, yeah. She traveled from the book of Jasher. We learned that they, you know she freak, She goes everywhere on this whole thing. Eli, you, you've read this part in Jasher, right? Yeah. Okay, so tell us a little bit of what, what, is, what is the account of Jasher on this. Um, so Satan comes to her as, I believe it was, uh, I think it was an older man, mm -hmm. and tells her that, uh, I, that Abraham is stabbing him, stabbing Isaac violently, so she, like, goes, Hold on, folks. Just a sec. Okay, continue on with that thought uh, there. Yeah, so she Sorry, goes, she goes running, and then she starts searching in different places, asking people where he is at, uh, where they've seen him, and none of them have seen him. And then uh, Satan, or I think I'll come up to her later in, in this chapter, I think, where Satan will come to her later again. Uh, no, she did. Oh, it doesn't say? Because Satan's the one who goes to her and says, uh, oh, actually, he's alive, and, her, and she becomes like, really happy, and then she dies. And we get a different account in this story. <clears throat> so let's, let's take that account. So that what Eli just talking about, that was the book of Jasher. Now, um, what you'll find in all these extracurricular books, it doesn't matter if it's Jubilees, it doesn't matter if it's Jasher, it doesn't matter what it is. There are details, there are stuff that you do not hear in other accounts. There's things that don't happen, that did happen, that do happen, that, that you know, there, there's, there's differences. So we got to be understanding that all of these apocryph apocrypha books have different things in them. Okay, 148. <clears throat> but Sarah said, Surely the heart of my Adon, Abraham, is right with Yahuwah, his Elohim, for he walketh before him in all his ways. Nevertheless, shall my son Yitchak be offered as a burnt offering, and I not be there to weep over him and strengthen him and pray for him, that he be an acceptable offering unto Yahuwah Elohim of Abraham. Nay, but I shall go to him. And Sarah departed with her men servants and her maid servants and went as far as Kebron, but found us not. Therefore Sarah rested in Kebron and sent her young men to find us, who searched all the land round about and even in the city of Shalom, but found us not. Then Sarah prayed unto Yahuwah, saying, O oh, Yahuwah Elohim of Abram, surely I know that all things are in thine hand, and I do not fear for my son Yitchak, for I know that my husband Abram is a Kohen in Hagdadal, after thine Kadesh order. Nevertheless, it is my desire to be with my son at this Kodesh hour, that I might share his joy and his sorrow before Yahuwah, our Elohim. Then the word of Yahuwah came unto Sarah, saying, Surely I have accepted the offering of Yitchak, and have provided a ram prepared before the foundation of the earth was laid to be offered in his place. Wherefore thy son liveth, and is with his father, Abram, and even now searches for thee. When Sarah heard these words, her heart was filled with joy so that she could not contain it, and her spirit was lifted up to see the paradise of Elohim. And she exclaimed, Behold, I have seen my Redeemer, and it sufficeth me. And she gave up the ghost. Thus did Sarah die in Kebron, being 127 years old. And she died, having seen her Redeemer, her Redeemer and having received from him the promise of eternal life. Okay, a little different of a uh, storyline, yeah. right? But that's not saying what the book of Jasher says isn't correct because right. there, Satan could have come back to her as well. There's a ton, yeah, there's a tons of details. And so I believe that Satan was messing with her far beyond all of this. And this is just the crescendo. This is the end of it. 
that we uh, are able to see. This might just be what Abraham knows. He might not know that Satan appeared to her twice. Yeah. 150. Then was word brought unto, uh, unto us that Sarah was gone unto he Hebron. Wherefore we journeyed there and found that Sarah had died. But having inquired after the manner of her death, we rejoiced that she went with the promise of exaltation, and that she died knowing of Yitchek's deliverance and of his acceptance with Elohim. Then we took Sarah unto a cave which I purchased of Ephron, the Kittite, for that purpose, and we buried her there, and we wept over her. Yet we rejoiced in her righteousness before Elohim. And all the people of the land came to honor Sarah and with Pharaoh, who came from Mitzrayim, and Ablamech from Gerar, and many others who honored and loved Sarah. For she was truly a handmaiden of Yahuwah, and ministered unto many in the name of Yahuwah, in love and charity, and was greatly loved by all for her kindness, meekness, and her great wisdom in reverence. All right, gentlemen, I think that's where we will end with this reading for today. Does anybody have anything that we can add to this? Um, Sarah was a really good person. Sarah was a great wife to Abraham, and uh, she was a great teacher. According to this book, she was really good looking, too. Yeah. Like, really good looking. That's what Abraham says. Yeah. and uh, Twice. The man wrote the book. He wrote, he wrote the book. Yeah, that is true. You think there's a bias there? You think she's just all that? Of course, there's a bias, but... Yeah, yeah of course, but anyway. Beauty is in the eye, but yeah, uh, the eye of the beholder, as they say. What else, Jay? And uh, they were really like, they, were, they were pretty much like, they were pretty much like king or something, or something of royalty, because every time something happened, you know, the, the, the kings, the high-ruling people, they always came and uh, showed up, so... Yeah, yeah but Abraham was the man, right? Abraham was the man, and you can see it in the Book of Jubilees and the Book of Jasher, when he dies... That people from everywhere. When Abraham dies, people from all over come over. This dude was loved. And it wasn't just because, of uh, you know, this guy would, you know, there's stories of him when he would sit in his crossroads and the people would come and he would feed them all every single day. If you were on this little path and you, you walked across the house where, where Abraham was, he would bring you in, he would feed you, he would minister to you, he would teach you the ways of Yahuwah. And... Abraham was the man. Like that is uh, a fantastic example of a a um, a family of ours that we should be following in in suit and doing just this right. Just because it is back in the days and he's doing it doesn't mean that we can't do this same kind of stuff today. And we can we can love our Elohim. We can show people the love of our Elohim. And how do we show people the love of Elohim? How do we sh how do we how do we invite them? I mean, wh what is the um, um, how how do people find Elohim? We teach them, we show them the Torah, we show them the Bible. We we do good things. We be kind to them, and then they will wonder why we're kind of them. Why the things we do, what we do, what we do, and then we can show them the Bible. We can show them that there is something we have to live up to, the standards that we have to live by. And for those who don't know how to find Elohim, where do we find him at? Uh, we find him in the Bible. We find him by praying to him. We, he is everywhere. Yeah, we find him in prayer. We find him in the Word. We have been provided with the laws, statutes, and commandments right from Yah's hand. And um, it is a way that we should be living. And if we are willing to alter our life to live as Yah wants us to live, then we are part of his covenant assembly. But our creator doesn't want people that smell like the world, taste like the world, are the world, and represent the world because he is anti-world. He's a different way. And so that is the, the path that we are begging people to follow is that these laws, statutes, and commands are good for all days, for all generations, for all people, for your life, for your family's lives, for everything. And if you will keep them, abide by them, you will have them forever. And that is the only way that we know of how to find Elohim is through his word. Okay. With that, everybody, much love. Have a good day. All right. Shalom. Shalom.